Taking off from Edwards on the evening of October 27th, the B-2 Spirit traveled to the top of the world and back during a nighttime mission over the North Pole, using a real-world environment to test the aircraft's endurance, performance, and hardware and software upgrades. Utilizing a combination of developmental and operational test objectives, this mission marked a milestone in B-2 flight test. This is the first time the B-2 had been up to the North Pole. We found some issues in the lab, but a lab can't replicate some environments. And one of those environments you can't replicate in the lab is what happens as you approach the magnetic North Pole. When, when you go out to some of those extreme areas or different areas on the globe, uh, you have to actually physically be there to really see what the effect is on the aircraft and the hardware and the software. And our, what we did on this mission is in a controlled environment, go up there, gather data in a prescribed test plan, come back and learn from that data so we can move forward. And that provides what the warfighter needs as far as knowledge to effectively execute the mission. The 18 plus hour mission to the North Pole and back consisted of extensive coordination between the 419th Flight Test Squadron, the Bomber Combined Task Force, and three KC-135s, which included the speckled trout. So the KC-135 is a proven navigation system that's gone over the pole before. Uh, so we took them as our get well uh, platform. Uh, since they've done it before, it's a known quantity. We haven't done it before, so it makes sense to take a proven uh, airframe you know, to, with us to the North Pole. Also, they have an excellent communication suite on board the C-135, and so that enabled us to have long-range communication and navigation uh, in the event that ours went bad. The operational portion of this mission consisted of releasing four unguided BDU-38 bombs over the Precision Impact Range area at Edwards after more than 18 hours of flight. The mission over the North Pole uh, with the B-2 also was a really good example of combined operational and developmental test. One of the things we really strive to do is look to see where are those areas where we're already doing something in a developmental test objective that can also meet objectives of the operational test and pull those two together and effectively test both at the same time. Jet Fabera, Edwards Air Force Base, California.